Are foreign investors ruining Australia's housing market? Are they buying up all the homes and making home ownership unaffordable, therefore pushing average Aussies closer to the poverty line? Based on the comments on some of my previous videos, it is certainly the case. The thing is, whenever you hear this argument, there isn't much information behind it, which makes it actually hard to figure out the impact on the Australian real estate market. So in this video, I'm gonna discuss what the main concerns and criticisms are related to foreign investment in residential real estate in Australia. I'm then gonna look at the extent of the impact on the Australian property market. From there, we can take a look at some regulatory changes that we can make. Red lights are flashing everywhere you look at the housing market. We have a big supplier problem. On top of that, our government has decided to embark on mass immigration. It's pushing the guys on the bottom closer to homelessness because they have to compete with the rental market and more renters. This pushes up demand for rental prices. Because of this, you see situations like parents going with out meals just so their kids can eat. We have a problem where building and developing is no longer profitable. This again feeds back into the supply issue. It's these compounding factors that are increasingly leaving Australians in a state of hopelessness. The increasing cost of living has meant normal people feel the crush in different ways. More time working and less time with kids and less time in the community, surely it's contributing to this mental illness crisis we're experiencing. When you look at the housing market issue, there's this stack of problems that revolve around each other and make this self-fulfilling doom loop where it feels like there's no way out. People feel trapped. I get the feeling that at the heart of this, people feel left behind because they are left asking the question, why are these foreign buyers getting looked after whilst we're forced to suffer in silence? It's easy to see why foreign buyers are being targeted for being the problems of our housing crisis. Let's look at some numbers. I could only find numbers for the 2022 financial year, which I find a bit odd. However, we can see here that there were 4,228 purchases of residential real estate. And there are also surprisingly 2,349 sales of foreign buyers, which feels like a lot. Some data here from PEXA tells us that there are about 50,000 residential real estate settlements for the same time frame. So if you put this data together, it appears that foreign investors have purchased about 8.5% of the market. For me, this helps provide some frame around the scope of the supply issues. Even if all the foreign purchases were stopped, however, we would still have a supply shortage. This data doesn't count foreign money that's coming here that is transferred to Australian residents and then purchased. The truth is this information is going to be hard to verify we can make the assumption that it is going on on some level. At this point, I want to talk about why foreign money will continue to come in. Australia is seen as a safe haven. Foreign money is coming from places that have a high degree of uncertainty. You have things like corruption. If someone rich and powerful enough wants to take your assets, then they will. That's harder to do here in Australia. You also have these things like instability, things like war or an unstable political regime could put people's money at great risk. These people are trying to protect wealth and what bigger risk to wealth than monetary risk. Right now we have a competition for global currency as the US is losing their power. You have the good old faithful US dollar. You have the old gold, which people still believe in. You have the ascendancy of BRICS and their digital currency. You also have Bitcoin, which I believe can be thrown into the mix now. These factors leave people holding wealth with a level of anxiety we just don't understand here. In some cases, we're talking about generations of wealth passed down to the custodian, who's now got the pressure of generations on their shoulders to do the right thing. And what better place to put your wealth than in Australia and in real estate? I've done a lot of thinking about Australian property in recent years and it just goes in circles. You start with how the crisis looks now, you insert a factor, then you trace it back to bad government policy and then you realise all the new government policies are just the same recycled garbage we had before which takes the crisis to the next level. Let's insert foreign buyers here as a factor, link it back to the policy in this area. What are they doing here? Not much 
a bunch of co-buy schemes, which if they are implemented, they're destined to take the housing market and our society into a dark hole we can't yet see into. This is a legitimate fear because it links back to our needs as humans. I mean, we all learn about Maslow's hierarchy in school, security is up there, and the prospect of not having our security needs met is exhausting. Having said all that, there is one big argument for foreign investors. Seemingly in this country, we have trouble distinguishing between two very distinct groups. Firstly, property investors who want to buy and hold, putting it in a harsh way, people that want to invest and make money while spending no time or resources. These people seem to be rewarded by our system. The second lot of the developers, the people that are working to increase the supply of the housing market by expending time and energy and therefore making a profit, I feel like this group gets punished at the expense of the first group. We had an exodus of foreign developers for several reasons. The Chinese property market tanking, the Chinese economy and the government wanting to keep money in China. You had the dodgy building saga with the Chinese cladding, higher costs imposed on stamp duty. The fact is that some of these players were contributing to the supply and I make the point that we should have a system that rewards these people. I believe we could have a place that is more true to traditional Aussie values, a place where we believe in getting a fair opportunity for a fair go. We can go back to that, a place where everyone's got a shot and whether they make it or not depends on them. But that requires good policy. Here's a few changes we could make. I'd like your input in the comments if there's something I've left out here. Residency or citizenship is a requirement. This needs to be for the unforeseeable future or until we get our house in order, which in my mind is going to take 10 or 15 years. Reward developers or anyone making improvements to land, which increases supply. Vacancy tax basically make it unviable to leave properties vacant for an extended period of time. How you police this is another issue. Create minimum investments. For example, minimum spend of $2 million per home, this would be somewhat problematic as it still forces Aussie buyers of those homes into other markets, therefore pushing up prices. Lastly, disclosing beneficial owners. If you're the beneficial owner of a property here in Australia, you should be required to be a PR or a citizen. Right now, if something is bought in a trust, we don't know who the beneficial owners are. This would close a loophole foreign buyers could use. Here's the thing, none of this is going to happen, not anytime soon at least. Part of the social contract, the agreement between the government and the people, is that the people pay for tax and the government looks after them. The government is breaking their contract in the eyes of an undeniably growing portion of the society. Listen, I get passionate about this sort of stuff because it's changing Australia. It's changing what we value and hence our identity as a nation. There's always going to be change. I just think whatever this is, is a change for the worse. Ultimately, as individuals, we need to chart our own course because the government's not gonna financially rescue us. That's why I create this content. If you wanna help me out, you can get in contact regarding some help with a home loan, or you can subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. As always, I'd like to know what you think in the comments. No keyboard worries, please. Cheers.